Andy Stanley says it so beautifully. The greatest contribution you may ever make to the kingdom of God may not be something you do, but someone you raise. Good morning, ladies. I wanted to just take a few minutes this morning and try to bring some encouragement to you if you are a mother. So if you're not a mother, this is probably not going to apply to you unless you intend to be a mother one day or desire to be a mother. But I was talking to Sister Darla and I was actually testifying to her about one of my children and the Lord just began to pour some things into my spirit and they began to pour out of my mouth. Things that I have applied as a mother, but sometimes you don't realize the necessity to share. And so as she began to say, you need to share that, I decided that I would put it off a little bit. And if the Lord wanted me to share it, then he would make provisions. And I had my head laid back, just resting for a few minutes. And the Lord just began to drop into my spirit the things that he would have me to say. So I am recording this on a whim. No notes. I'm just going to tell you how I feel. Being a mother to me is very serious. It's a very high honor, and God has given me arrows, special arrows with special tips. If you're a hunter, you know the importance of those tips, depending on what you're hunting, if you're target shooting or what. But God has given me very special arrows with very special tips, and I take those arrows and consider them my prized possession. As they were young, I kept them in places that were safe. I didn't leave my arrows laying around just to be trampled on or kicked or broken. I treasured them and I kept them in a special pouch. I kept them in the altar. I kept them at home. I prayed over them. I prayed where to point them, where to aim them and where to let go of them. I was so particular that when they were young and in the altar, I had ministers that were on guard for people that very um, frivolously laid their hands on people. They were not doing it in order to transfer spirits or issues from one person to the next. They were very innocent. They just wanted to pray with people. But do you know that spirits can be transferred? And what if you turn your children loose in an altar innocently and someone who is struggling with something that your child is not struggling with lays hands on them innocently and that spirit transfers? Just like I feel like you can gift people with the gift of faith, I feel like that if people are struggling with anxiety or depression or pornography, or any kind of addiction, that when you lay your hands on someone in an altar, even innocently, that those um, spirits can transfer. So I had people on guard in the altar. They didn't just allow anyone to lay hands on my children. If they knew that that person may be struggling, they would allow them to pray with my children, but they weren't allowed to lay hands on my children. And that was per my request. I was very cautious of watching people pray for my children in the altar. I have actually removed people or stepped in between people and my children before when I knew that they were going to lay hands on them. And I appreciate people's prayers and I appreciate people who want to pray with other people. But, you know, we have to be very careful of where we... I think that's why the Bible says not to lay hands on any man suddenly. We must be thoughtful and considerate of people that we're laying hands on and make sure that our heart is right and pure and of the right intent. But that's not the only place I want to go today. I want to encourage you that while you're protecting your arrows, you have to be educated on how to use those arrows. Now, I know that some of you probably have a master's degree and some of you may not have a degree at all. Some of you may not have even finished high school. But that doesn't mean you can't be educated. If you will go to the Lord in prayer every day and seek God for what he would have you to teach your children, he is going to lead you and guide you. 
I do not have a college education. I was a kindergarten teacher for 14 years, and I did it to the very best of my ability. I feel like I was a born teacher. But when I brought my children home and began to homeschool them, I felt ill-equipped. Not in the side of their education per se, but in what to teach them according to the Word of God. So every night before I went to bed, I would just seek the Lord and I would say, Lord, if you will wake me up in the morning with a thought, with a scripture, or even a topic of what you would have me to teach my children, I promise you I will obey and teach them. And do you know, I had them at home for many years, um, 11 to be exact. And that is exactly how I taught them and trained them in the word of the Lord. I sought the Lord and it was just like manna. Every day he provided. Every day it was just enough. And I was able to teach my children. Now, I'm not saying this braggingly or in a boastful manner, but I was intentional. And I'm going to encourage you today in this devotion to be intentional in how you teach and train your children. So when my children struggle, in areas of life, when they go down a wrong path, when they mess up, make a mistake, they fail, or maybe they're just struggling. Do you know that although I pray for them, I call people and gather a team of people sometimes to pray for my children. I do not worry because I have a promise. Go in your Bible and circle Proverbs chapter 22, verse six. Train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is a promise from God. Circle it, pray it, stand on it, believe it. And then when your children struggle, when they go astray, when they make mistakes, and your loving, unconditional arms of love welcome them back. And I'm not saying that they have to leave completely. I'm talking about even just a little struggle that you may have to help pull them out of a pit when you open your arms and you're like, I'm here for you. I'm here to catch you when you fall. They feel the love of their heavenly father. And you do not have to worry as to whether they're going to come back around or not. You already have the promise. You just have to pray. You just have to wait. And you just have to trust the Lord that he is going to do exactly what he said he would do. So I'm saying this today. Don't be careless with your precious cargo. Don't leave your arrows just laying around anywhere. Intentionally keep those arrows. Point those arrows in the right direction. Shoot those arrows because you know what? When you are a good marksman, you are going to shoot those arrows and they are going to land exactly where they were intended to land. And that's a promise that you can hold on to. I am so grateful today for the privilege to be a mother. I always hated the comments when people would say, oh, you're so lucky you get to stay home with your kids. Or they would say, you're so lucky you have such good kids. They're just good kids. Both of those comments made me very upset. The fact that I was able to stay home with my children was not luck. My husband and I made great sacrifices and did without many things in order for me to stay home with my children. We didn't have the perfect home and two car payments and eat out every night of the week and do whatever we wanted whenever we wanted. We made great sacrifice so that I could be the greatest influence in their life. Number two, I always hate when people say, you're so lucky, your kids are just good. You know what? That is not luck. I was intentional. God put it in my heart. God gave those children to me to pray over, to teach, to train, to shoot in the right direction. Many years ago, Sister Penny Carpenter came up to me and we were talking at a conference I don't even remember where it was. And she said to me, she said, make sure that every single day of your children's lives, as long as they're in your home, when they get up in the morning, you pray over them. Do not let them leave for school. Do not send them or take them out the door until you have prayed over them and read them the word of God. And I'm telling you, 
it rocked my world. Up to that point, my children were, I believe, five and ten, maybe four and nine. But I had never really thought that that's something that I should do every day. I loved that they went to Sunday school and learned the Word of God in Sunday school. I loved that we were involved in children's church and they could learn the Word of God in children's church. But I had never taken it on myself to be the greatest influence in their life. I had never taken it upon myself to teach them the word of God so that when they went to church, their pastor and their Sunday school teachers could reiterate what they were being taught at home, that it was being refocused, that it was something they had already heard, something that would cause them to remember what they had been taught at home because they were hearing it at home and at church. And I began to do exactly what she said. I would set my children on the couch in the morning. I would read them a scripture of promise. I would pray over them and then we would go to school. This is years before we started homeschooling. And it began something in them. And so when we began homeschooling and I began teaching them the word of God, I became their Bible teacher. You know, I got this story from Sunday school teachers for years. We can't teach your kids anything. They know everything. Well, although they kind of meant that as a slap in the face because... They were the teacher and they wanted to be able to teach them something. I took it as a compliment because I was like, thank you, Jesus, that I'm able to teach them and that they're remembering. These things are in their heart and their spirit. They're able to go to Sunday school and answer questions and know the word of God. And it's just being reinforced at Sunday school. Ladies, teach it at home and let it be reinforced at Sunday school and church. You should be the greatest influence in their lives those are your arrows. You shoot them where they belong. Pull back that bow and let them go and you know exactly where they are going to land. And I hope that this really encourages you today to be intentional in teaching and training your children, praying over your children and protecting your children because your children are your arrows. Arrows are precious weapons. Protect those weapons. Keep them safe, but you make sure that you put the tips on them that are going to do some damage in this terrible world we're living in. Put those tips on there that are going to destroy the enemy, but conquer for Jesus Christ. I love you ladies, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. Get yourself this book, Seeds of Jacobed by Kim Haney. It is a wonderful tool for teaching your children the word of God. You will be blessed, they will be blessed, and I cannot tell you how much I feel like it will be worth every dollar spent.